Hi everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. If you don't know me, hi, how are you? My name is Rosa. I am making this video for a clinical laboratory scientist. If you wanna know a little bit about it, please make sure to like and subscribe to my channel. I post new videos every Tuesday and Saturday and I add a couple in between when I do have more videos to post. So just make sure you hit the bell notifications and you'll stay updated on any time I post a new video. That way you never miss a new one. So today's video, I'm gonna get straight into it. I don't wanna take up too much time in my intro. So I'm gonna get straight into it. If you're here by the title or my thumbnail, you can see that it is how to become a clinical laboratory scientist. So what am I gonna teach you today and what will you learn from me? And why should you watch my video? So I'm gonna share that with you right now. So I am a clinical laboratory scientist myself or medical laboratory technologist. Depending on where you live in the state, they give you different titles. My title at work is actually considered medical technologist. So that is my title at work, but I did gain my degree in a medical laboratory science. So that was the name of my degree. I'm gonna share with you guys what steps you need to take if you wanna become a clinical laboratory scientist, medical laboratory scientist, or if you're also interested in being a technologist, which is a two year degree. So I'm gonna go through all those steps with you guys. I'm here to hold your hand and we're gonna walk through it together. The first thing you have to do if you're interested in a career, even just barely interested, like you're just kind of learning a little bit about it and you're barely interested in the career. What should we do first? So first thing you wanna do, do you want to do a two year degree? A two year degree, you are considered a clinical laboratory technician or a medical laboratory technician. Or would you like to do a four year degree? Do you want to become a clinical laboratory scientist or a clinical laboratory technologist? They're both the same thing. Don't worry, you guys. I know it's a little bit confusing. They have a lot of different names for it, but they're all considered the same thing. So it depends on you. What would you like to do? Um, before I get into what kind of things you need to go through, basically, the reason how you should know if you want to do this career is I'm going to go through a little list with you. And if you think these things would really fit and it's something you want to do, then I would definitely consider the career. So me as my experience being a clinical laboratory scientist or like medical technologist, because that's what my title is at work to decide if you want to be in a career like this is do you, you have to ask yourself these questions. Are you interested in a career in science? If you are, this will be something for you. Are you wanting to work in a laboratory setting? This could turn off some people in a lot of ways. Some people may like it or some people may not like it. It could be something that you're actually really interested in because working in a laboratory is very different than interacting with patients if you're not really aware. And it's something that you should definitely try to shadow in a hospital. I know it's gonna be really hard, especially with Corona virus. And then also just everything's becoming more restricted as regards to students entering and shadowing and doing things like that, because a lot of them will allow you to actually go in and see how it is, but it's just so difficult right now. So I know it's a really hard time to be like trying to decide on a major if you're just entering college. I'm sorry, you guys, like it's a really bad time and I apologize so much and it sucks a lot, but you want to know if you're interested in the sciences, the hard sciences. So what does that mean? You're gonna be taking classes in organic chemistry, but you're gonna take an intro class, most likely. Some of them will make you take the full Orgo 1, Orgo 2 sequence. For us, we only had to take intro to organic chemistry. You're gonna have to take chemistry classes. So if you don't pass your entrance exam, you're gonna have to take um, Gen Chem 1, Gen Chem 2, intro to chemistry, like I said, if you don't pass the entrance exam to place out of it, you're gonna have to start with Gen Chem 101 basically. And you're gonna have to do math, but math is very, not too bad. We only have to take up to statistics. So we didn't have to take any calculus um, for this major, but some programs may, you have to check your program requirements and depending on your state too, they may have different requirements. I had to take microbiology. So you're gonna have to take microbiology most likely, more than anything, that's a really important class. Microbiology and biochemistry, and those are just kind of the classes you have to take prior to even getting in the program, most likely. This is not a full on list of classes you have to take because obviously you have to take your gen ed if you're deciding on the four year degree. But for the most part, those are your main courses that are really required for entrance into the program. But this is also something you have to talk about with your school. So each school is different. So this is not towards everyone. You're gonna have to do a little bit of research on your own and which program you would like to apply to. What we do is we examine, analyze, body fluids, tissues, and cells. This is the majority of what we do on our job. We are always, not always, if it's not busy, but for the majority of the time you are at a bench looking in the microscope and looking at finding cells 
body fluids, tissues of people's specimens. And then we have to report out what we see. So we are doing a lot of the science behind the medicine. What we do is very important in the diagnosis of patients. Symptoms, clinical state, we are the ones who are in charge of finding those things and presenting them to the doctor. We don't always present it directly to the doctor. It depends what kind of work setting you're in. For us, we report the results in a computer and those results get sent to the doctor and they interpret that in order to diagnose a patient. So if that's something that sounds interesting, that's one of the main things we do on the job. Trust me, it really is. We identify blood clotting abnormalities. Cross-match donor blood for transfusion. That's something I do in my lab. We do do cross-matches. If you guys don't know what cross-matches are, is when you take someone's blood and you take another person's blood and you kind of, I guess, want to, I'm going to make this simple. You kind of mix it together and you use different types of reagents to see if there is a reaction because if there is a reaction that means you can't give them that blood but if there's no reaction that means they are compatible they're good to go and they can get that blood from the other person we identify infective microorganisms so there's tons of stuff people can have one of the things what we do we actually test in my lab we test for coronavirus in my lab covid19 that's the technical term for it COVID-19, we actually do the testing on the Abbott Analyzer and I'll put that here on the screen so you guys can see it. So we do work with a lot of things that maybe some people won't be comfortable working with. We are at risk to get sick. So that's something you have to weigh out too. Is it something you want to do? Because healthcare is a tough job. Healthcare, you have the chance to get sick. You have the chance to get your loved ones sick. It's something that you really have to be passionate about or else you're going to absolutely hate the job. But also, I think that if you don't want to interact with patients very much, because I don't do a ton of interactions. At my hospital, since it's a little smaller, we do blood draws. So with blood draws, we have to actually go in and draw a place with blood. So that is when I interact with patients. But for the most part, we don't. You have to ask yourself is, would you prefer to work in an environment where you're kind of more like on your own? Resulting on your own, but you don't really have anyone telling you what you have to do? Or would you rather work in an environment let's say like a nursing, where basically you are attending to a person your whole shift and you have to make sure that you're okay. You have to make sure everything is going smoothly and there cannot be anything going wrong. It just depends what kind of work environment you want to work in. I know no, nursing is a little bit more social. So if you're more of a social person, even actually both can be social, just depends on how you are as a person. If you want to be more social and interact with other types of people, maybe go for nursing. But if you are actually interested in learning about the science and using your knowledge to do something and to provide results, and also maybe work in a little bit more of a quiet setting, even though the lab is not that quiet because the machines make a lot of noise. So it's not that quiet as you may think, but it really is in reality because, I mean, you do have your other coworkers you talk to, so there is still, you know, interaction if you are working with other people. For me, when I actually start working on my own and I'm done training, I leave myself on the night shift, but I honestly have no problem with that. I don't really mind because I get to kind of, you know, be my own leader and what I do wrong is my fault. Like I can't blame anyone else. It's my fault, my mistake, and I will learn from it. I think it would be good for me to experience working on my own. That way I can get really good technical skills and I'll be really set with if I ever want like some other type of job. And it just gives me really good leaderships too. So that's why I wanted to work at night shift by myself and I had no problem with that, but I'm not there yet and I will get there eventually. So now some of the other things that you may want to consider while becoming a clinical laboratory scientist or um, clinical laboratory technician is to decide if you want to do either the two-year degree at a community college or a four-year degree at a university. So they both have their pros and cons. Like, I'm not going to lie to you. One may sound better than the other for you. It just depends what route you want to take. At a community college, you become a technician. To become a clinical laboratory technician at a community college, you need to go to school for about two years. I'm assuming you take only the hard sciences. I can't say very much because I didn't do that route. I did the four year route. And so the only real big difference is with the technician versus the technologist or scientist is that you are not going to get paid the same. You still perform the same job duties, but you'll be getting paid less. And it does depend per employer. So I can't give you a range of how much less you would make, but I just know that it is less. And if you do a four year, you will be getting paid more. And depending on your state, you can make up to like, 50 60 bucks honestly it just depends what state you're in what need there is for scientists and technologists because sometimes a lot of jobs give you sign-on bonuses i got a sign-on bonus for even working at my job 
So it just honestly depends. And it's a matter of if you take on overtime as well. The pay can really range. But if you want to know about that, I'll even share my pay on a Q&A if you guys are interested. But let me know in the comments down below if you want to see a Q&A. And, you know, line up some questions for me. I'd love to answer them for you. Working conditions. So now that we got the education out of the way, let's talk about working conditions. So what kind of places can I work at if I become either a clinical laboratory technician or a clinical laboratory scientist. So we're gonna talk about that right now. You can work at a hospital clinical laboratory. That is what I do. That is like what the majority of scientists actually work at because there's such a great need for that area. Since hospitals are busy, they need people to report results. We need people to look in microscopes and find those um, findings to be able to report out to the doctor and patient to get that clinical state and get that patient going and make them healthy again. You can work at commercial or reference laboratories. These are kind of laboratories like Quest, if you know anything about Quest Diagnostics. They do a lot of testing that is sent out to their clinic that is not done normally in hospital or clinic labs. So they might be a little bit more complex or take a little bit more time. So they're held in a reference laboratory. And in those types of settings, you're not interacting with any doctors at all. It's basically just other labs in your own lab. So you don't deal with any nurses. There's no patients involved. You are just working on your bench all day, working where, whatever area you're in, and you analyze those results. You can work in a public health laboratory. You can work in pharmaceutical or chemical industries. You can work in biotechnology companies. You can work in forensic and law enforcement laboratories. So that's something that's actually really cool. And I would love to maybe hopefully get into that in the future. You can do police work. So basically anything that comes in a forensic lab, you get to work on yourself. And I think you might need an additional um, certific like certificate to do that. So if you want to, are interested in that, just know that medical laboratory science is the route that you can take in order to be able to work in a forensic lab. You can work in veterinary clinics, so if they have a lab, you can work there. Research and teaching institutions. If you become a clinical laboratory scientist, you can also do research. You can work in a research lab. I know a lot of those positions don't pay very well, but maybe since you have that four year, two year degree, they might consider paying you more. It really just depends on the research. It depends on the lab. It depends on the PI. So, you know, if you are still interested in going to school though, this is something that you can do on the side while you're attending school. If you want to get your PhD, if you want to get your master's, if they require you to do some type of research, you could probably get paid for it. So be aware of that. You can work at transplant or blood centers. So basically transplant centers, people who do kidney transplants, there's laboratories specifically for those where they do all of the HLA testing as well as blood centers. Um, we have plenty of blood centers everywhere. If you get a pack of blood, it comes from a blood center. So they focus specifically on the findings of the blood. They find antigens, antibodies, and they focus solely on blood because it is such a big part and it's such an important part of the lab. And a lot of people don't know that, but they have their own separate buildings where they conduct the testing for the blood specimens. You can work at a fertility clinic and you can also work in the cosmetic and food industry. You can also work at those types of companies as well. So these are the types of jobs that you can potentially look for after you graduate from your programs. And I think it's a really great job to have. Coming from myself, I've only been working for about three months or so, almost four. And I absolutely love my job. I love what I do. I go in with pride every single day to work because I know I'm making a difference in the lives of others. I know I'm doing something very worthwhile to the community, to the greater good around me. And I know that what I'm doing is really making an impact because without me, um, the doctor wouldn't be getting the results to interpret patient results and for them to become healthy again. So I think what I do is really essential and really beneficial. And if that's something that you're interested in doing, if you want a job that's fulfilling, I would recommend this career. If you do want to become a laboratory manager or a supervisor, there is room to grow. So it's just up to you if you want to take on those additional steps of schooling or experience and training in order to move up, which you can definitely do in this career. You can also if you want to decide to move up, you can work as the system technicians. What a system technician is, is you basically work on the analyzers that are in the laboratory and they get paid very well. The only thing about them is that they have to travel quite a bit, but if you're not deterred by traveling, I would totally recommend it because they look for clinical laboratory scientists. 
in order to fill these positions because they know they're really aware about how testing is, um, how to go into a laboratory and set up testing for wet testing because that has something that has to be done prior to actually resulting patients. We have to do test patients in order to get reference ranges and get QC in. And because you don't want to result something that you have no idea if it's even in range because that can really harm a patient. You can kill someone by doing that. In my opinion, I think there's so much room to grow because there's not a lot of people getting this degree, but you will always find a job because I always find postings. Every single state has a need for them because there's not a lot of schools anymore. But I say, even if you have to move and you're really interested in this, I would do it because you can move to a state where you're making really good money. And I see so much potential and there's so much room to grow. You can also work as doing the a laboratory information system. So basically you're like an IT person, but working within the lab and they get paid very well too. And that's something you don't have to go for more school for. They will train you if they see that you've been working as a scientist or a technician for a really long time. Most likely a scientist. I think you'll still need a bachelor's. So correct, I will correct myself and say that you will need most likely a bachelor's in order to do that but you don't need to go to school. Like you don't need to go get a master's in IT unless you really want to. They might make you have to take certifications depending for Epic. Epic is an electronic medical record system. You can work for Epic as well. They all get paid very, very well. You also need to get your certification most likely to get a job. Make sure you take that exam and pass it and do well because at some point you can i think work without it but they won't pay you as much so just be aware that you do have to take the exam the ascp or the certification exam so just be aware of that thank you guys again so much for watching this video i hope this was helpful and wanting to learn how to become a clinical laboratory scientist um please let me know in the comment section down below if you want to see more of these types of videos or any questions you may have for me about this career path and i'll answer the pay in the q a probably could have answered it here but i'll just do it in the q a video you guys can ask me any questions you want please throw some questions down below i'd love to know what more you guys want to know about what i do my career what i actually do on my job so yeah thank you again so much for watching please make sure to like and subscribe and i can't wait to see you here again soon